On a whim, I decided to go to WrestleMania 40 this year. I've wanted to go back to Mania for a few years, but after seeing the Las Vegas press conference, I thought I'd see about going to Philadelphia for the 40th showcase of the Immortals. I felt my editors could do with a break too, seeing as we have all been working hard over the past year, so I thought I'd stop work for a while, take myself and my wife to WrestleMania 40, and record parts of my journey for you guys on YouTube. Because I planned this trip way too late, I ended up going with on location for tickets. I've never used these guys before, but they partner up with WWE and other sporting outlets for what's supposed to be decent priority tickets, easy access to the venue, and other little perks. I'll never use them again by the way, but I'll explain more about that in just a moment. So, on Wednesday the 3rd of April, we took the trip down to Dublin to fly directly to Philadelphia International Airport. The reason we fly from Dublin is because we can avail from US pre-clearance down south, meaning there's no security to deal with when we land in Philly. The flight was great, we got to the airport and grabbed our bags, and we got to see Lincoln Financial Field on our way to the hotel. It's been a while since I've attended any live WWE shows, so I got tickets for SmackDown, Hall of Fame, WrestleMania 40 and the Raw after WrestleMania, but the first problem arose before we even flew out. On location, an official partner of WWE had not sent us our tickets for WrestleMania. Yes, I was flying out without having tickets on my phone, so already I'm a bit concerned about actually getting into the stadium. We dropped our bags at the hotel, we went out to get something to eat at around 11.30pm, and one of the first things we saw in Philadelphia was a lady, a lady showing her bare ass on the street while she urinated beside a bus stop. Remember this because it comes full circle as we head home later on. Also, I'm not very good at these kind of travel videos, so apologies in advance, but this is what happened when I went to Philadelphia for WrestleMania 40. We decided to stay in the Hilton Home to Suites because it was situated right beside WWE World, the new WWE convention that replaces Access. There was supposed to be an entry for on location customers, kind of a fast entry point which I really needed to use seeing as I didn't have our WrestleMania tickets yet. I asked the lady at the front desk and she basically tells me to fuck off and join the mile long queue down the street where I'll be able to enter the building and find what I need to find. We get into the convention center, I ask where the on location desk is, and again I'm told to queue up with everyone else and it'll all get sorted out later. Already I'm having pretty bad feelings about this WWE world stuff because the organizational skills of fanatics, the folks running the event, is not good at all and trust me, I'm not the only person who was disappointed. Fans didn't know where to go, they didn't know what doors to go to, the staff were trying their best to be fair but even they were like, we don't know, just wait an extra half hour or whatever it was. Finally, I find the on location desk, the guy says my tickets were already emailed out, I said no they weren't mate and after he checked on his computer he was finally able to send my tickets. Cool, time to go to WWE World, only no, you gotta join another mile long queue to get a wristband and do keep in mind we are already about 2 hours behind schedule. We get the wristbands, we get to look around WWE World and the WWE Superstore, and yeah there's some cool stuff to see and do, but it's really a one and done deal. Fanatics sold 5 day passes for this thing before they announced which superstars were appearing on certain days, so they preyed on FOMO big time and again, I wasn't the only one who noticed this. We did get to watch an AJ Styles panel and we also watched Cody Rhodes talk about his upcoming WrestleMania matches, so these experiences were good, not gonna lie. Cody talked about possibly dropping the whole undisputed Universal WWE Champion title if he won the belt at Mania and just reverting back to WWE Champion, and he also hoped he could get a belt redesign or throwback design if he won the championship on night 2. All in all, this was good and it was fun being up close with the WWE superstars, but the rest, I don't know man, I personally didn't think it was worth the money. I'm an idiot and I bought the 5 day pass so it was my fault, all I needed was a 1 day pass really so yeah I got suckered in. 
After looking at the memorabilia on offer and talking to a few WWE fans, I sat back down at the main stage to wait for The Rock's appearance. Unfortunately, he ended up running super late and I had tickets to The Undertaker's One Dead Man show later in the evening. So I left the convention center listening to the sound of fans booing and chanting, this is bullshit. You will not want to miss this. Thank you. The One Dead Man show took place in the Fillmore a few miles away from the convention centre. Unfortunately, phones and cameras have to be stored away during The Undertaker's show, which means I have nothing to show you here. But if you haven't seen The One Dead Man show, then I highly recommend it. Taker talked about his worst mania matches, he answered questions such as the biggest prank he's been a victim of backstage, and Taker also trolled the audience by talking about who should go over this weekend and why the audience's favourites weren't gonna win. He's actually a very funny guy and his stories were all fun and lighthearted, so I definitely recommend checking that show out if The Undertaker appears in your neck of the woods. On Friday, we had SmackDown to attend, but first, it was a trip to the Liberty Bell. It's always good to learn about the places you visit, and my wife's a big world history buff, so it was fascinating learning about the history of the Bell and what it represented in the past and present day. Someone told me it was Steve Blackman who cracked the Bell, and I was surprised to find out that this wasn't the case. I also went to WrestleCon on Friday to catch up with DDP, but I didn't stay for too long. I did meet Dean Malenko, Lex Luger and Sting also, and I got some stuff signed by these guys that I'll probably hold on to forever. I'm not into flipping or selling the stuff I get signed, just little things I like to keep for myself. Steve Blackman was to appear on Saturday and I didn't get a chance to meet him. I joked on reliving the war about meeting Steve and getting some superpowers from Sensei Blackman, but when I walked around the Liberty Ballroom, the room where he was supposed to be, he just wasn't there. Maybe he was having lunch or something, but I got super pissed off when I looked on Twitter and I noticed other folks had already met him. I really wanted to get Blackman to record something for reliving the war, but I wasn't prepared to hunt him down while he was in the restroom, you know? Also, a quick side note, loads of folks commented about how I should have set up a table at WrestleCon or I should have done something at WrestleCon for viewers to pay me a visit. To be honest guys, I go to these events as a fan and I like to keep a low profile. I don't want attention really and to me, WrestleCon and WrestleMania weekend is all about the wrestlers and the history of pro wrestling, not folks on YouTube. More part of the folks in this space who set up shop at WrestleCon but it's really not for me. I'm a fan. I always will be a fan and nothing more, and I'd have a serious case of imposter syndrome if I tried to be anything more. We had good seats for SmackDown in the Hall of Fame ceremony. I absolutely love Paul Heyman's speech, but I also noticed that around a quarter of the arena left after Paul was done. Saturday, WrestleMania Day, and boy, it's cold. It's fucking cold. I know everyone heard about this online, but trust me, I'm from Northern Ireland and I thought a little bit of cold weather wouldn't put me off a single bit, but it was pretty bad, not gonna lie. On location, put on a tailgate over at Citizens Bank Park right beside the link and this gets a thumbs up from me. It wasn't overcrowded, there were tons of food and drink options available, a few wrestlers made appearances including Ricochet, Kurt Angle and DDP, and it was a good way to fill up before the big event inside the stadium. We got good floor seats for Mania because I thought, fuck it, I'm probably not going to come back for a long time and if I'm traveling all this way, I want to do it right. So we got a great view of the entrances and the ring. I did feel extremely privileged to get these seats and I really couldn't have done it without saving money earned from the channel. So thank you for bringing me to WrestleMania 40 guys. It, it was just so cold on night one. We thought we were loud but the internet said otherwise. But guys, again, it was so cold that all you were concerned about was staying warm while watching the action in the ring. Still, we had a great time. The only match I thought was bad was the Jay vs Jimmy Uso match, and even the fans sitting around us made it clear that this match wasn't good. But we still had a good time, and the place went nuts for our truth Sami Zayn and The Rock's entrance. I need to watch both Mania Nights on TV so I can make a fair assessment on the match quality, but being there in person was cool and seeing the superstars up close was a real treat.
We wake up on Sunday morning and it looks a lot brighter outside. The weather forecast says it's going to be a little warmer, so the mood was definitely better during Sunday morning and Sunday night. We didn't eat much at the tailgate on Saturday because we weren't sure how many food options would be available, so we just had a coffee on Sunday morning before having a big late lunch at the tailgate before heading into WrestleMania night 2. We were sitting beside some really lovely people and honestly, the people you sit with at these events can make all the difference. Everyone we sat with were in brilliant spirits thanks to the weather and everyone popped and cheered for everything that happened in the ring. The money in the bank cash in went down brilliantly with the audience, everyone had a lot of fun during the US triple threat match, Bailey winning her match also got a ridiculous pop, and the atmosphere during the main event was like nothing I've ever experienced before. I said the Hardy Boys pop at Mania 33 was the biggest pop I'd ever witnessed in person, but this was surpassed multiple times during the Cody Rose vs Roman Reigns match. We all expected Stone Cold to show up, and I think the WWE presenting The Undertaker instead worked wonders for the fan reaction. Sure, the place would have went crazy for the glass shattering without a doubt, but the gong to signal The Undertaker's arrival was so unexpected and I hope the audience reaction translated well to TV. Again, I'm yet to watch it because I've been catching up on work, but I will probably watch it at the end of the week. I absolutely loved Roman Reigns' entrance with the big orchestra. The atmosphere before, during and after the main event was insane. Everyone was on their feet during the last moments of the match and everyone stayed for Cody's celebration. Fans were still celebrating out in the parking lot afterwards and I swear I must have heard Kingdom about 200 times over the whole weekend. After Mania was over, I was glad I made the trip. My wife isn't as big of a fan as I am, but she said she had a brilliant time too, so it was all worth it in the end. Sometimes I look back at certain pay-per-views and I think about how much I would have liked to have been there in person, particularly for classic pay-per-views that I talk about mostly on the channel, so I'm glad I went to Mania 40 and I can always say I was there for those two nights. We didn't fly home until Wednesday and we still had Raw to attend on Monday. So on Monday morning we took another trip to the WWE Superstore within WWE World to pick up a few items before heading over to Philly Zoo. Getting away from the hustle and bustle of Wrestlemania and downtown Philly was great. And gotta say Philly, your zoo is way better than Belfast Zoo. I could have watched these monkeys all day to be honest. We hung around the zoo for the solar eclipse, we headed back to the hotel for a quick nap, then we went to Monday Night Raw. The crowd was great even after spending all that time outdoors in the cold for Wrestlemania, but I'm gonna be honest, I was hoping for a few more surprises at Raw. It was great seeing the NXT guys get showcased and the Cody and Rock promo may have been awkward but it was still great. Honestly, just the experience of being at a live Raw show is enough for me because we don't get a chance to do things like this often so I was just grateful to be there. Something I hope made it to TV was the Samantha Irvin chance. The crowd absolutely loved her and it looked like she was legitimately taken back by the chance. Really cool to see. Also, Pat McAfee embarrassed Michael Cole by singing happy birthday to his broadcast colleague. This didn't make it to TV, I'm sure, but it was funny seeing Michael being both annoyed and incredibly happy at the same time. All the wrestling was done, so on Tuesday and Wednesday we tried to see more of Philadelphia but a lot of things we wanted to see were closed and that sucked quite a bit. I wanted to check out the art museum but it was closed, the East State Penitentiary was closed until Wednesday so that kind of ruined our Tuesday plans, so we took the open top bus tour to have a look around the place and even the bus had to take a detour because of roadworks or some shit I don't know, so we didn't get to see Betsy Ross's home and other things we wanted to see before leaving. Still, we got to see plenty of other historical landmarks and we stopped off to try a few cheesesteaks at recommended places. For dinner, we went to the Hard Rock Cafe because it was literally two minutes away from our hotel, and on the Wednesday we did get to the East State Penitentiary which we both enjoyed quite a lot. I've got a fascination with prisons and my wife and I always check out prison documentaries and things of that nature, so getting to walk around one of the most famous jails in all of America was really cool. Sounds weird to say a penitentiary visit was a nice way to end the trip but it really was. We then walked over to the art museum where the famous Rocky steps are located, so we visited Rocky's statue and took a trip up those famous steps before getting an uber and heading back to the hotel. The trip was over and it was time to fly home. 
We pack our bags, we wait in the lobby for a bit. And remember I told you about the lady we saw on the street when we first arrived? The lady urinating on the street? Well, one of the last things we saw in Philly was a different lady with her ass out in the middle of the street in broad daylight. But this lady was wiping her ass with some tissues that she found on the ground. It really did all come full circle for this WrestleMania trip. Coming home from a trip like this always sucks, but we come home with good WrestleMania memories. It's always fun talking to other fans from different backgrounds with different viewpoints, not only on wrestling, but on life in general. You do learn a lot by listening to other people's stories who come from other places, and it kinda enriches you as a person to have these conversations. There's a real feeling of togetherness when you go to WrestleMania and you find yourself cheering along with complete strangers and high-fiving the guys sitting around you. And really, that's what it's all about, sharing the love of pro wrestling. I tried to keep my Twitter usage to a minimum while I was away, just posting pictures here and there during the trip. But when I started scrolling down my Twitter feed, in contrast to the great time I had with fans at WrestleMania, I was instantly reminded of the crappy side of wrestling fandom, all the negative shit that you can find yourself getting sucked into very easily. It's like I had this great WrestleMania trip and I'm on a high coming out of these shows, but then I look online and it's a bunch of miserable people complaining about stuff that really doesn't matter. Going to Mania 40 has made me want to stay away from that kind of stuff and limit my time on the Twitter platform because I remembered what being a fan was all about. So yeah, that's another positive that came out of this trip. I'm still going to post on Twitter for the sake of the channel, but I'm going to make better use of the mute button. All in all, I'm glad I went. I wouldn't recommend using on location if you're going to buy your tickets for next year's WrestleMania though. And while Philly is an interesting city and the food options all around the place were great, I'd also hope for some warmer weather just so the fans give it 100% when watching the matches. If Vegas, New Orleans or somewhere in Florida gets announced then I might be tempted to go again, but I hope that's in a few years time and not next year because I don't think my bank account would forgive me. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed WrestleMania, whether you watched at home or whether you too went to Philadelphia. And I appreciate you watching this travel video, which I'm not very good at making, but yeah, yeah, there it is. Again, thanks for watching, guys, and please take care.